New York is the birthplace of hip hop and has been home to some of the greatest voices that the genre has ever given us. Over the past 15 years or so, the narrative has been that New York has gone from the influencers of hip hop to the influenced, with many of the city's younger artists drawing inspiration from Houston, Atlanta, and even the UK. But over the past few years, the New York underground scene has been thriving with a new style and sound. I've seen people refer to it as abstract hip hop or lo-fi hip hop, but I feel like those terms don't really do justice to the artistic magnificence of this movement. A lot of people attribute this wave to Earl Sweatshirt, and while Earl might be the biggest name of the scene, he himself gives a lot of the credit to a rapper named Mike. Earl is about four years older than Mike, but he still cites him as a huge inspiration on his current musical style. Over the past seven years, Mike has gone from a kid making music in his room to one of the leaders of the movement keeping New York hip hop alive and thriving. Michael Jordan Bonema was born in 1998 in New Jersey and spent time growing up in England and Philadelphia before settling in New York City. This array of places and cultures that he experienced at a young age helped Mike quickly develop a unique artistic voice. He started releasing music on Bandcamp when he was just 16 years old and his sound was already unlike anything I've heard before. He grew up in a house with all women, so he cites a lot of his early inspirations as R&B artists of the 2000s. And when you combine this soulful approach with his fandom of 2010's weirdo rap like Odd Future, you get the very unique style that is Mike. His 2015 EP, Belgium Butter, is great. The production is a fun throwback to old soul music, and Mike's lyricism is amazingly intricate and personal. Pretty fun or smart, homie, I ain't none of that. Post to wear my boobies, spitting loogies on your hundreds hat. Scars from the squads, got me looking like a thundercat. Homie, where you gonna at? My defense leave you running back. This level of lyricism at such a young age hasn't really been seen since Earl Sweatshirt and Joey Badass were just starting out. After releasing a few more EPs, he released his first full-length mixtape just after turning 17, Winter New York. This project is where Mike fully embraces becoming both a voice of New York and a relatable voice of the people. Recorded entirely in the birthplace of hip-hop, the Bronx, this album has interludes that detail teleporting through New York, and that's exactly how I feel when I'm listening to Mike. I can turn on this album in the middle of summer on a beach and still be transported to wintertime New York City in my head. They say New York is everything. Now they're absolutely right. Because Winter New York has officially come to town. With Winter New York, you can go just about anywhere in the city with just one mixtape. You can listen at every subway station. So if you want to prove to someone that New York has it all, just show them your Winter New York mixtape. Mike has said that this album deals with how the more physical things that he becomes connected with, the less connection he has within himself, and how he's lost that voice in his head. At just age 16 and 17, Mike was already very in touch with himself and his thoughts and emotions. His music is known for being emotional and personal, and it's impressive to hear how natural that was for him even as a teenager. The first thing that struck me about Mike was his name. It's almost shocking seeing a rapper choose to go without a stage name, especially with a birth name as common and simple as Mike, but I feel like that choice was incredibly effective. There's no stage name for him because the artist that we get in the music is the real man behind it. For an artist who's so vulnerable and real on the mic, it only makes sense that our connection with him as an artist would be through his real, authentic self, and not through any false sense of branding. Mike is a founder of the hip-hop collective Slum. Just like Beast Coast before them and the Native Tongues back in the day, slums consist of like-minded artists who all share a love for music and expressing themselves artistically. And even more than that, they all seem like really good friends too, which helps all of their artistic collaborations feel so natural and effortless. The group consists of Six Press, Jody Tenke, Daryl Johnson, King Carter, Mason Drayling, and Mike, with several affiliates to the crew like Navy Blue, Slauson Malone, Madani, and more. Mike has stated that Slums was created in an important time in his life, where it felt good to be around people that he felt like he understood. His debut full-length LP, Longest Day, Shortest Night, was released in 2016, and set him off on one of the most underrated album runs of the past decade. On this record, he continues to grow into one of the most personal writers in hip-hop. His writing, combined with his recording style, makes it feel like he's right here in the room with you while you listen. It's a truly comforting experience listening to his music. Around this point was when Mike caught the ear of Earl Sweatshirt, who was often thought of as a legend of his generation. Earl was Mike's favorite rapper, and they pretty quickly became close, forming a mentor-mentee relationship, with Earl showing Mike a lot about how to move in the industry, and Mike even influencing the sound of Earl's album, Some Rap Songs. After releasing a few more EPs, he released possibly his best album, May God Bless Your Hustle, in June of 2017. 
The album is completely self-produced, and not only showcases his ever-improving lyricism, but also cements himself as one of the strongest producers that the underground currently has. I can never break bread with you birds, cause I'm used to taking less in the first place. It ain't really about the lyrics or the wordplay, boy there's something for my spirit and my worst days, nigga. His production style perfectly complements his vocal performance, with these dusty soul samples and hypnotizing loops. Mike does a great job of taking familiar feeling hip hop sounds, but experimenting with it, pitching up and down his samples and mixing drumless songs with songs with off-kilter drum patterns, expanding the bounds of what a typical boom bap song would be able to achieve. In 2018 he released three albums. Black Soap and Renaissance Man each have some of my favorite Mike songs, but it was his third project of that year, War in My Pen, that became possibly his best work to date. Drink a song, smoke and tell my lungs to lies. My thoughts just be a bummer, can't get through the summer side. Nah. Need a re-up, I'm gonna get some of my brother's pack. Nah. You try to fake it like his love, but trust it wasn't that. That was the first project that I ever heard from Mike. I remember first seeing the album on somebody's topster, and they were saying that it was one of the best albums ever made. I was struck by the simplicity of the album cover. It looks almost like an amateurish masterpiece. I loved how it was just a photo that's not really in focus, but the blue piece of art on the wall is so interesting to me. It's a messily beautiful blue design of people and flowers that was drawn onto a USPS priority shipping box. And when I listened to that album, it perfectly represented that cover to me. The mixing feels sort of cheap in a beautiful way, just like the blue artwork that looks like it's sort of popping out of Mike's head, giving us a look inside his mind. The album was produced entirely by Mike, under his production alias DJ Black Power, and features New York City based artists and slums affiliates like Midani, Navy Blue, King Carter, and more, making this album a great place to start if you're looking to get into this scene. It really showcases everything this movement is about to me. He released two more albums before he even turned 22. Tears of Joy and Weight of the World continue to build one of the most impressive discographies that we've ever seen from someone this young. Mike raps in a very unique way. It sounds almost stream of consciousness, making it seem like he's pouring his mind and his heart onto the track. His music is so personal and so emotional, sometimes blending rapping with singing and then into mumbling and moaning, helping his music feel so authentic, almost like freestyle spoken word poetry. Goodbye to my aunt, shed a tear when I left Was back with TJ in the Bronx, shit I never forget And I was grinding all along, I was letting them rest It's young Mike, I give it all in respect to the dead Was moving shicey in the dark, but the message was sad Times I ride, then it's settled with it I don't know any other rapper who performs with this much or this kind of confidence. I don't mean confidence as in conviction in their words, I mean confidence as in the unwavering poise that he has. Most rappers would shelve songs that are unusual or overly personal, but Mike embraces it. And when you're listening to the music it's something that you know that only Mike can create. After a very underrated 2020 EP under his DJ Black Power alias, he released his most recent album Disco in 2021. Disco, which is possibly Mike's most impressive showing to date from a production standpoint, is one of the best albums of the year, and solidifies Mike's status amongst other legends in the making like Makami and Navy Blue. Mike's music really rewards repeat listens because his voice has a hypnotizing quality to it, often blending in with the instrumentation, which is perfect because that forces me to slowly peel back each layer of the lyrics piece by piece, and with every listen of Disco it gets better and better. The future is incredibly bright for Mike. On top of his musical career, he has expressed interest in a career in filmmaking too, and as one of the most creative young minds of his generation, there is no doubt in my mind that Mike will be bringing us incredible art through a variety of mediums for years to come. Thank you for watching everybody. This is my first video of 2022, so happy new year. Thank you all so much for taking this journey with me. I have a ton of great video ideas planned for 2022, and I'm going to try to step up my game with both my quality and my consistency, so I hope you guys stick with me through it. As always, if you aren't subscribed to my channel already, please do so. It's appreciated more than you know, and like I said, I got a lot more videos coming your guys' way. And that just about does it. Thanks for watching.